By the end of this video, you'll know how to use all five slot commands that are available in Fusion 360. Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to the Product Design Online YouTube channel, where I demo all things Fusion 360. If you're new here, be sure to hit that red subscribe button and go ahead and comment below and let me know what you plan on using Fusion 360 for. The slot command can be activated from the sketch dropdown list or from the right click sketch menu. Like many of the sketch tools, the slot command is ultimately there to save you time from having to manually create all the different sketch geometry. Depending on which slot command you use, a series of geometry and constraints will automatically be applied. More often than not, you'll be drawing the slot command on the face of existing bodies to cut away the material. However, for the sake of this demo, I'm going to draw them on a blank sketch so it's easier for you to see the sketch geometry. To start off, I'll select the center to center slot command. Then you'll need to select an origin plane or the face of pre-existing geometry where you'd like to place the slot. This first slot type, the center to center slot command, creates a linear slot defined by the placement and distance of the slot arc centers and by the slot width. Therefore, the first click will set the first center point of the left arc and the second click will define the center point of the right arc. Then, as I drag my mouse cursor out, you'll notice I have to define the width of the slot. I can define the width by typing out a specific dimension within the input field, or by simply clicking to place the width. After clicking to set the slot width, you'll notice that the slot appears to have an orange background highlight, which signifies that it's a closed profile. You'll also notice that the slot command automatically applied tangent constraints where the arc touches these horizontal lines. It also added parallel constraints to these straight lines instead of horizontal constraints because this type of slot can be used at an angle. Lastly, you'll notice that this center to center slot command created a construction line from one center point to the other, which can quickly be dimensioned. If I select the dimension tool from the sketch dropdown list, I can click on the construction line and add a dimension, and the slot will adjust accordingly. To fully constrain this type of slot, you will need to add a dimension to one of the arcs. After adding a dimension, you'll notice that the sketch lines are now black, which signifies that the sketch geometry is fully constrained. The second type of slot is the overall slot. The overall slot creates a linear slot defined by orientation, length, and width. After activating the overall slot, the first mouse click will define the start point of the slot center line. Then, the second point will define the endpoint of the slot center line. Similar to the center to center slot command, after placing the start and endpoints, you'll need to define the width of the slot by typing out a dimension or by clicking with your mouse. I'll simply click with my mouse to set the width so we can analyze the difference in these two slot commands. Overall, these first two slot commands are pretty similar. However, you'll notice that the center line of the overall slot command runs from edge to edge instead of center to center. Because of this, the overall slot command also automatically has two midpoint sketch constraints applied to it. Now, this overall slot command is more useful when you know this slot needs to fit within an overall dimension. Whereas the center to center slot command is useful if you know the required dimension between center points. The third slot command on the list is the center point slot. The center point slot creates a linear slot defined by a center point, the location of slot arc centers, and by the width of the slot. 
After activating the center point slot, you'll need to click to set its center point. And it's important to note that it's the center point of the slot itself, not the center point of the arcs as with the center to center slot. The second point will then define the center or the middle of the arc. This can be defined in either direction as the opposite direction will automatically be applied for us. After clicking to place the center point, you'll notice as I drag my mouse cursor out, the last point I need to define is the width of the slot. Like any of the slot commands, I can either type out a specific dimension or I can simply click with my mouse to place the width. After clicking to place the center point slot, you'll notice that the only difference between this slot command and the center to center slot that I first demoed is the fact that this one has an extra center point and a midpoint constraint. This center point slot comes in handy when you know the center of the slot should be lined up with or built from some pre existing geometry. The center point may also come in handy if you need to add dimensions from the center point to the arc center point, or from the center point to the edge of the slot. The four slot command is the three point arc slot. This slot command creates an arc slot defined by a three point center arc and the width of the slot. Therefore, to define this type of slot, you'll start off by selecting the starting point of the center arc. The second point then defines the end point of the center arc, which can be placed by entering a dimension or by simply clicking with your mouse. Third, you'll notice I have to define the arc radius. After clicking to set the arc radius, I can drag my mouse cursor out, which then gives me the option to set the width of the arc. Now this slot command is essentially the same as defining a three point arc with the added step of defining the arc width. After clicking to place the width of the arc, you'll notice that the arc has this nice arc construction line in the middle, which can be dimensioned. Using the sketch dimension tool, I'll simply click on the construction arc and type out a dimension and the three point arc slot will update accordingly. This slot command doesn't have quite as many constraints as the others. So oftentimes you'll find it essential to constrain or dimension the center point of the arc. Otherwise, the arc can easily be moved around by clicking and dragging at this arc's center point. You can also dimension the radius of the arcs on the end of the slot, which then defines the width of the slot. Or you can dimension from the center point to center point of each endpoint of the arc. The fifth and final slot command is the center point arc slot. This slot command creates an arc slot defined by a center point, two point center arc, and the width of the slot. Therefore, this slot command is just like creating a center point arc with the extra step of defining the width. To start off, you'll need to specify the center point of the slot. I'll click to set the center point, then I'll click to set the width of the arc. After setting the width, you'll notice I can drag my mouse cursor around or type out a degree in the input field to define the radius of the slot arc. Lastly, after defining the radius, you'll be prompted to define the width of the arc. You'll notice that these arc slot commands look pretty much the same once they're completed, but the center point arc command works best if you need the arc slot to be created at a specific point of your sketch geometry. Whereas the three point arc slot command works best if you need the slot to line up with two defined endpoints. In summary, you'll find that these slot commands can save you a ton of time versus manually creating all this sketch geometry. With just a few simple clicks on the mouse, you'll have a series of sketch geometry and constraints, both that can be used to add or cut away from the bodies of your design. 
Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.